Okay, so now we've created our storage profiles. Let's put this into practice and create some virtual machines. So I'm going to create a virtual machine for Oracle and I'm going to pick the enterprise storage profile for that. So just go through the wizard as normal pretty much. It's what you'd see in pretty much today's vCenter. Uh, when we get to storage though, we will be able to choose the storage policy here. And so what I'm going to do is pick Enterprise. And I'm going to pick ESX 6 and later. This is going to be a VM volume. Make this a Linux machine with Red Hat 7. Sounds good. Gonna make the storage a little bit bigger. And let's complete that. Alright, while that's going, let's create a second virtual machine. And this one I'm gonna create as a web server. Can pick my compute resource. Select my storage policy. Here I'm going to choose value. Again, we're going to make a VM volume. This will again be a Linux machine. This time I'm going to choose something like Debian doesn't really matter but all right we're ready to go but before I do so so I've chosen value for one of the disk drives I'm gonna add a second disk drive here just to show that I can have two disk drives that are actually in different storage profiles so let's give this one let's say 32 gigabytes And this one, I'm going to say the data in this is more important than the disk hosting the operating system. I can always reinstall an operating system, but it's hard to do a to recover if my data is lost. So let's go and create that virtual machine, and then we'll uh, then we'll move on. OK, so I've now got my Oracle and my web server. OK, so let's take a closer look at the web server we created. We'll go to the summary page here. And we should list out the VM storage policies once this refreshes that are assigned at this virtual machine. And we should see both value and enterprise. And there we do. We see that we're actually compliant. This is Graham Smith from NetApp Solutions team. And thank you for watching this demo.